So our company, we started out around 10 years ago to focus on industrial applications for the electric utility industry. And at that point, it, uh, we were referring to a lot of what we refer to now as the industrial internet of things. Um, uh, that was heavily what they called the, a smart grid focus. Or predating that, it was machine to machine or, or really just, uh, you know, uh, connectivity for industrial applications. And so we, uh, we had a very uh, utility focus and looking at automation of, of components of the electric grid and uh, using, using a proprietary technology that we developed uh, from the ground up for, for industrial internet applications. And uh, for the smart grid, it was things like substation automation, um, what they called uh, distribution automation, which is uh, voltage regulators and capacitor banks, any pretty much anything you see hanging off of a, a utility line. And, um, and about three years ago, early 2015, uh, we were approached by the electric utility industry, uh, specifically APRI, which is the Electric Power Research Institute, and they said, Look, your, your technology is perfect for industrial applications, uh, but we want um, uh, to create a standard around it so other companies uh, can participate and continue to develop the technology uh, along with you uh, full spectrum. And so uh, that initiative was kicked off in, in, I guess, January 2015. And then October 2017, uh, the standard was published, and it's uh, known as IEEE. 802.16s, and to my knowledge, it's really one of the only licensed wireless uh, protocols for industrial automation today. In manufacturing, typically they're using um, uh, a cable type network. This, our technology is really uh, focused on wide area deployments. So mm -hmm. some of the characteristics that are common to industrial users are that they often, um, it, it goes beyond just a, a single plant or a series of plants, but is more, uh, for example, let, let's use the electric grid. Uh, one of our customers, uh, typically they're trying to cover, uh, a typical customer would be 10,000 square miles. Uh, one of our customers, Rappahannock Electric, they operate in uh, 20 counties uh, just west of Washington, D.C. Uh, including in, in the Blue Ridge Mountains. So they, they're trying to cover an, a very large area with a industrial internet technology. So one of the things that a, a lot of the utility industry experienced uh, in the um, 2005 to 10 timeframe was people looked at using Wi-Fi applications outside, unlicensed uh, Wi-Fi, to manage these wide area networks. And almost all those projects failed. And it was really because they could not obtain uh, the coverage over a wide area. So for example, our, one of our base stations covers uh, roughly 3,000 square miles uh, from a single base station. And that's in opposition to something like, uh, uh, let's say an LTE technology, fourth generation technology that's deployed by AT&T or Verizon you're looking at, um, historically, we've talked about 30 square miles, but they've moved the, the, uh, the tower sites with less uh, lower coverage now, and it may be as little as three square miles from a tower. So if you can imagine you're an industrial customer and you're trying to cover a very wide area, uh, thousand, thousands and thousands of square miles, uh, uh, to do an LTE type technology uh, would, would cost you, uh, literally that, that customer, um, uh, if they were to look at a LTE technology, it'd be a hundred million dollars to just cover their service territory. So it, uh, one of the ideal positioning of, of this standard and the equipment is that it uses a combination of, of licensed frequencies in, in that propagate very well. Uh, so you need minimal infrastructure to cover your, your territory. there are uh, a variety of levels of security. Some of our customers run their uh, network over these, these large areas completely uh, off net um, with a, a, an air gap between their corporate network 
and this network. So that's one of the compelling parts of this is you can originate and terminate your traffic over a very large area uh, with very little infrastructure and never touch the, the public internet. On the other hand, if you want access uh, to open up access, you can do it on a limited basis uh, so they, uh, or a time-based uh, uh, interval where uh, someone has access to the network and then it's closed back off. So there's all sorts of levels of, of security uh, just from the way the network's deployed as a private network and using license frequencies. Every one of our customers, within the standard, there are many options to, to define your quality as service. So when an a industrial customer deploys our technology, they'll end up with their own configuration that is, is designed just for them. And uh, so another device joining the network, in addition to having authentication and over-the-air encryption, they also have uh, what you would say is a special version of, of what they're deploying uh, um, that uh, somebody would need to know in order to gain access to the network. 